Natural ability will get you to a certain level, but it will never get you all the way. I got into free diving a year and a half ago. Free diving is an incredible sport where one basically learns how to take a big, big, big deep breath and you go down into the water, whether it's swimming down or you pull yourself down from a line while you're holding your breath. The body goes through the most dramatic transformation of any sport because it happens in a matter of seconds. When you are at 100 feet, for example, your lungs are one quarter their size. So they've basically gone from a big watermelon to a small orange. As you come up again, air starts to expand and expand and expand, and your lungs then grow again from being an orange back to a watermelon at the surface. As a free diver, one of the divers that I admire the most, uh, of course, is William Trubridge. He's 18-time world record holder. This is an amazing human being. He will dive for over four and a half minutes. It's just absolutely incredible. My goals in freediving have been the same pretty much throughout my career, and that's just trying to create the best underwater engine that I can out of my body. I thought, hey, reached out to William and asked him, have you had your genome sequenced? Do you know what are your genetic predispositions for a sport like freediving? Are you interested? And he responded that he had not sequenced genome, but he was very excited about doing it. We're in the Bahamas, we're in Long Island, and the reason we're here is because Dean's Blue Hole, which is the deepest blue hole in the ocean, here is where William trains most of the time. This will be the first time that an athlete, that the top of his sport, is sequenced fully. How has his genetics played a role, or not, in his abilities to be an 18-time world record holder in free diving? The reason I want to sequence my genome is curiosity mainly. It's kind of all those questions that we have about how much of what we are or what we do is written in our own code when we're born and how much we've created through hard work and effort during our lives. And also seeing if there is anything down the track which might catch me out that I need to look out for. I mean, it may be that I have a huge propensity to cancer or to heart disease. William, we're really excited to meet you, to be here, first time in the island. There's a little tube here, and you'll spit in this tube. And then once we've completed your sequence, we basically look at all the variants, and then we'll make an interpretation of what those variants might mean, and we'll go from there. Cool. All right, here we go. William, we're very happy to get at this point. We have now the report of your genome sequence done, uh, and we're going to review that. Hi, William. Hi, Kristen. I know a lot about you now. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like, in general, you have an increased uh, aerobic capacity. That predisposes you to uh, increased VO2 max, in your genome sequence, we found a pathogenic variant called ApoE E4. The presence of an E4 variant in most people increases the risk of Alzheimer's disease about two to three fold. I think that that risk is highly environmentally dependent on dietary iron. Ooh, it's not a good thing for me because I need to supplement with iron in order to get as much hematocrit. You probably are going to have to make a decision at some point in your life to trade athletic performance for reducing your risk. I think this is the most important finding in your genome. The most significant findings in the genetic report were that I have the ApoE E4 variant, which increases the likelihood of Alzheimer's later in life. It was a little bit disconcerting. The iron that I take as a supplement for freediving, which increases that risk shouldn't be a factor at this stage in my life while I'm training for freediving. That's the nuance and the magic, if you like, of genetics. Genetics does not determine exactly who you are or what you can do, but it does play a role in how your body and your physiology can do certain things throughout your life. So knowing that also will allow William probably to 
adjust certain things in his routine and his diet. The whole experience was really fascinating and interesting because it's good to get an impression of where your abilities are coming from and also what risks that you may face in the future. So for anyone who's concerned about their health or who's interested in knowing where their abilities come from, it's a really revealing and fascinating process.